And Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. They've been cooking these last couple months. Winners of seven of their last eight games. And if you extrapolate that out to a full season, they'd be 14-2. and two. And anyone in the NFL today would sign up for that. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Bears, they too were winners last time out. So something's got to give here. And I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. And he'll take this across the 25 couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line Detroit Detroit ah! they'll try and start this drive in the air flushed out right this will complete to Curtis Samuel. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one goes for 24 yards. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. as well what we call those broken plays you can't account for them yeah those plays those Detroit, two that you just Detroit. mentioned a microcosm really of how he can hurt you all right here we go Blue first lady. carry of the game for Blue christian lady. mccaffrey heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23 but a good run there on first down and it'll leave them with a second and two well i think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half you've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Ah! Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Rolling to his right. Pressure and he's taken down. A bear sack. Danny Trevathan in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. Detroit! 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 He'll drop to throw. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. And in week 17, let's hope this won't affect him for the playoffs. We'll step aside. The first red zone opportunity for the Panthers thus far. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. They'll give it up to McCaffrey, and he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. And the big boys up front in the trenches, what do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Second down, McCaffrey. And effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third and one situation. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. It's been a seven-play opening drive, and this is third and short. They'll 
but their fullback tried to push the power. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They've definitely established a rhythm on this drive, moving the ball quite well. And big man with football is an integral part of the whole thing. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. That's someone who's pretty happy right there. That's the defense coordinator. Body after body getting to him before he can get started. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal right, now, would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down territory? Might he go for it. Now this time he'll look to throw. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Ian Thomas, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Panthers take it right down and score on the opening drive. Well, these guys have won three straight ball games and another good start to this one out to the 6-0 lead. And I've talked with so many different coaches, as have you along the way, and they always talk about winning streaks and the mood of a team and how much easier it is to actually prepare during that time. Guys are sharp, guys are focused, everyone's feeling good, and we're seeing it early in this one. Gano the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. Gano out to kick this one away. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. They'll have the speedy Tyrod Tanner calling the shots, the former Virginia Tech Hokie. That was a solid performance last week, wasn't it? Two touchdowns, no interceptions, ran the team well, won the ball game, bottom line. May not have been earth-shattering, but it didn't need to be. Protection was going to spring a leak on the first play from scrimmage. Got after him right out of the gate. Off the play fake. Here's Taylor. Middle of the field. It's Robinson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. And that goes for a gain of 31. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Muscles him off. Dumps that off to his running back, Jordan Howard. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll make this a second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. 
The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. the gun on third down, it's Taylor. They'll leave it for Cullen, complete. And he's going to get the first down as he covers up after a pretty good shot there. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. The numbers for Howard a week ago, 19 carries, 66 yards. Well, watching the film, we saw that things clicked pretty well for them in the running game last week. No reason to change in my mind. Continue to try and run the football, give it to them early and often in hopes of breaking down the defense so some bigger gains result as the game goes on. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Allen Robinson, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the football game. And the QB rating right now is sky high. Four for four on that opening drive, and it ends with a touchdown pass. Yeah, I don't know quite how to figure it out. I think I need my friends from MIT to come in and help me. <laughs> but I think 158.3 is the number one. No, that's <laughs> right. That's the highest you can get. That's where he is. He'd like to continue on that pace. Lutz good on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This one fielded at the 5. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Carolina offense making their way out. We take a look at the playoff picture in the NFC. And you can see it's no race for the top spot. That's been decided. These guys will hope to get through Week 17 in one piece before they host a division round game in two weeks' time. And I think that what they'll do is they'll be very selective about who plays in this game, all right? There's certain guys that maybe are starters, but maybe haven't played as much as other guys during the year. Maybe they still need their timing back. Other guys, you're going to put bubble wrap and put them on the sidelines <laughs> and tell them we'll see you in two weeks. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The numbers a week ago for Wallace. He was no doubt a key piece to their puzzle in that victory. And when this offense plays well, you just know he's going to be in the middle of everything, don't you? I mean, defense is going to say, we've got to take this guy away. He doesn't allow himself to be taken away, does he? So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Set! Blue lining! Blue lining! They go play action here on first down. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Gone, gone! Gone, gone! And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And his throw here is incomplete. But there was no trace of nervousness there. He was able to diagnose that play from his linebacker position, stay in excellent coverage, and bat the ball away. The Panthers on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third gone, and ten. Gone, gone, gone. They'll set up to throw. He's got the first down and more past midfield. 
field. And he takes it across the 50 to the 46-yard line. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant. And oftentimes they can turn them into big plays. Broke through some contact, but unable to reach the 40. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. It was the linebacker, Leonard Floyd, on the stop. Last stop. Last stop. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again and that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game third and short blitz was on what's the key for the quarterback get out of your hands in a hurry and there's a quick little completion got the job done for a first down first carry for the former Tar Heel Elijah Hood and not much running room down to the 32 just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. I actually broke that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of right, touched that you actually six. wrote something Lucky like that down. Six. I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they wanted to, but I think we'll see more as this game goes along because they want to continue to take care of that young QB. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? Now let's go! The play action fake. They'll look to throw. This is caught. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The goal for any offense versus his own defense. Find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. So another third down conversion, and now they've got it first and goal. Result, six points. Touchdown. 
Extra point try good by Gano. And that makes the score 14 to 7. So that one along 11 play drive. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. Then he'll take this across the 25. Couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. He's within shouting distance of a 1,000-yard season, but you read the local paper this morning. There was no talk of that mark. They interviewed him, and he wasn't talking about a 1,000 yards. The old cliche focused on this game. If he has a big one, might be able to get the win and a 1,000 yards. Seems like he just wants to let it come to him, right, as opposed to trying to force it. That's probably the right idea and the right attitude. So game situation, play calling will dictate things. Now, how does he get there once he tries to get hot? Formations. Route running, trying to get mismatches for him, different types of routes he will run downfield, short, medium, long. All those things will come into play as he tries to get to that magical number. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Call it a loss of two on the play. And they'll be facing a third and 12. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. He gets away from one. Forced out to his left. He may try and run for this. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 46. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Now they'll throw with Taylor. Over the middle complete. It's Burton. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. Trey Burton, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the football game. Lutz with the extra point. And we've got a tie game here in a back and forth first half. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Carolina getting set to take the field. Now right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. It was Bryce Callahan jarring the ball free defensively. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. This is Hood on the ground. And an alley to run. Before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to run them. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. 
Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. to throw here and he fires one incomplete Mike Wallace the intended receiver and it's third and short I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me I didn't see anything open and this play just didn't look right from the beginning it did not I thought he might get outside and just Blue chuck it away Blue dangerous pass Blue incomplete Blue they'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey and he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the way. They'll set up a throw. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Give him two yards on that play. And just like that, it's third down. Under four to play now. Clock running. Third down. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. They'll drop the throw. Watch coming, and he's taken down. So this has been a lot like a tennis match, hasn't it? Back and forth. Both these offenses having their way so far. So maybe the question isn't who's going to score the most points in this game. Maybe it's who's going to get some stops. Yeah, absolutely. And that sack, finally a first step in the right direction for a stop. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And it'll be first and 10 Bears from deep in their own territory. The fourth down run go, successful. Go, go. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Slow, slow, slow. <laughs> they go with Howard to begin the drive. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run... Not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. This is Howard on second down. And he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage with a penalty flag down. This might push him back further. Holding offense. can see this quite a bit on running Still plays with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right, because it's away from the play usually, so a lot of it goes undetected. But I know this will surprise you. I coach some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand placement and blocking downfield. Might want to take that course. On second down, Taylor. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. The Bears on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This time they face a third and two. They go play action with Taylor. And they can't bring him down. And they'll find Shaheen, the tight end. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? They're going to it over the top to him. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'd open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's 
a Panther sack. So two minutes to go in a wild first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Third and long, it's Taylor. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. That's three sacks now, and that's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team, they need the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. Fielding just inside the 20. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. An update from down in Tampa. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. Jameis Winston with two first half touchdown passes. Right, here we go. 319. 319. On play action, they'll throw. That's Samuel caught that side. He got 29 yards that time. That crossing route is so effective when you hit it just right because you get a guy on the move. And then we see the end result there. Nightmare for the defense. They got a guy with a full head of steam. Not only does he All catch right, it, but he picks up additional yardage after it. Looking to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. The Panthers got to go quickly. They're moving with a sense of urgency right now. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. Detroit, he didn't force Detroit. it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. And right with it here, over the middle. And he'll go down at the 28. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. They'll look to throw here on first down. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the God, toughest God. ones to come back God, and get God. because usually Watch your momentum's going fight. in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, God, break, God. and come back and get it. God, God. Back to throw now on second and 10. A quick throw, but incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. He'll drop to throw. That is man complete over the middle. It's right. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 13 yards as the quick slant keeps the drive moving. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17 as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you as always. Welcome into our final regular season edition of our halftime report. Playoff lives hanging in the balance as we take you around the NFL one final time. We'll start at Raymond James Stadium, an NFC South matchup between New Orleans and Tampa Bay. And it's the Buccaneers who are out in front with that game closing in on halftime. Jameis Winston with three touchdown passes. Next, we'll take the trip north to the Steel City to check on the Steelers at home in Pittsburgh. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Raiders. Ben Roethlisberger has thrown a couple of touchdown passes. Finally, we'll save the biggest for last. We head to AT&T Stadium to see what's happening with the Cowboys at home in Arlington. And they've got the lead in that one over the visiting Atlanta Falcons. 
Two touchdown passes there for Dak Prescott. Meanwhile, in our game, no shortage of offense as each team has been able to move the ball effectively. Will the defenses show up in the second half? To find out, we give it back to our commentator, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. Now the quarterback, Tyrod Taylor, is our focus here in this player spotlight. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Now he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Here's Taylor over the middle complete. That's Burton. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Taylor to throw on second down. He leads this one for Howard. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that, second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now Taylor on first down. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. On second down, here's Taylor. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Sims. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. On third down, Taylor. Got his name complete over the middle. That's Burton. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And it's picked up by the Panthers. The Panthers offense now. They head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect. But overall, you like what your game plan showing you. Again, they run again. It's McCaffrey. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And it'll be third and ten now. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. Gone, gone! Gone, gone! The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. He's 
Gallows man, that's Wallace. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. A nice gain of 21 yards. So first and 10 now from the 30. to throw now on first down. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Second down gets hit. The Panthers on third down. As close to automatic as you can get. Nine out of ten. This will be a tough third and 18. They'll look to throw. Steps away to his left. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Leonard Floyd. He's the one to get him, and that's sack number seven for him on the year. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So make some room next to Tom Dempsey on the NFL's all-time field goal distance leaderboard. That's going to go down officially as a 63-yarder. Let's not forget about David Akers, Jason Elam, and Sebastian Janikowski, too. So now Matt Prater is 64. He's got a little bit of company up near the top spot. That was one heck of a kick right there. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. The Bears coming out as they get ready. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive? A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. And here foul. come the flags. Face mask. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. And that is first down. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march up another 15 against your squad. On first and 10, it's Taylor. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. Now Taylor. The screen pass here to Cohen. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. The screen good for six, but it's not enough as it leads to a fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return, and the Panthers will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Carolina getting set to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. 
The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled go and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three Detroit. points out of. They've got to feel Detroit. good about that. Detroit. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Another scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. No, 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 no. Check. Patriot. Patriot. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Hot. Hot. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And he takes this from the 30 to the 34. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, 39. Cut. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Got a man, it's right. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 15 yards through the air and a first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw no, right no, there no, Jack, to move Patriot, the sticks. Patriot. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fit and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. All right, here we go. Green, 39! Green, 39! This is McCaffrey on the give. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now let's go! 319! Now on first down, he'll drop the throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And this time, not quite to the 30. He'll be down at the 31-yard line. Only three there on the screen at second down. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, but what a nice job improvising, finding other options, and completing the pass anyway. Here we go now. They're going to look to throw. Rolling to his left. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And I think the Bears have recovered. They have. So he went out of the pocket left, and then things got dicey. And what often happens is when they get outside, they want to keep their eyes downfield in order to try and complete a pass. But when they try to make a play, they've got to get their footwork involved, and that can really mess them up as well. And in this case, nothing went right, and the ball got knocked free. The Bears in good field position to start out first and 10. <laughs> Following the fumble recovery, it's Taylor. Pressure comes in, he's brought down, it's a Panther sack. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. On second down, Taylor. They'll leave it for Cohen, complete. And it's a fumble. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 
The Bears on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and 14. From the gun, it's Taylor. In the heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Dante Jackson picks it, and they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. Well, it's third and long, and you've got a few different ways to play it offensively. But this is not the type of offense that's going to wave the white flag. They're going to keep chucking it. And this time, it results in an interception. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And it's the right side here, complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here we go now. Three, 19. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. On first down, he'll drop to throw. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Special foul. Face mask. Defense. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. So we'll get the penalty all sorted out when we get back. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Leopard! Leopard! Hot! Hot! McCaffrey following the penalty. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Now whistles here, and it looks like we've got a Panther that's having some difficulty down there getting up. And in week 17, let's hope this won't affect him for the playoffs. We'll step aside. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Hi, hi. Hi. They'll run it now out of the goal. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. Give him nine yards on the carry there. A good run. And now second and goal. Well, I think you'd have to say defensively, these guys are doing their job pretty well, right? Yeah, we talked about them holding them under 20 points, right, on defense. And they've done that. They've held them. The problem is their own offense hasn't answered their challenge, which was to score more. Yeah, exactly. I remember you saying magic number was right around 20, and the offense has been the issue. You're right. He'll look to throw. And he's got a touchdown, Panthers. Ian Thomas, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Panthers add on to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors. But that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Gano now to add the extra point. Extra point, and his guys will take a 10 point lead. A drive that time of six plays, and Carolina scores to cap it off. Gano out to kick this one away. 
This one fielded at the five. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They go back to the air here after the IMT on the last drive. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. His throw incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to the QB, aren't they? Yeah, hang out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Here's Taylor to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So now third and ten, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. Again, it's Taylor. And he comes back with one complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That catch puts him over 70 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get the third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Got his man and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. In for the score. And the Bears draw a bit closer. So very late. in the game here, but with that score, some light at the end of the tunnel. There's still hope. Now they look at the score and say, hold on a second. This thing's not over yet. Let's keep battling. Lutz to try to add the PAT. Lutz good on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Lutz now to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Carolina offense making their way out. We take a look at the playoff picture in the NFC. Well, we do know, Charles, they will be in the playoffs. They currently sit at pole position number one, but nothing's set in stone right now. They still have to earn that top spot. And it makes me reflect back to preseason when you and I do our tours of camps. The prevailing message in each and every one of them was what? Win the division. Win the division. Win the division. You know you're in the playoffs. It means something. It, might mean, it means a home game. It means a number of other things. But winning the division is paramount. You're right. They won't step off the gas here. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Detroit! Detroit! Here we go now. They'll drop the throw. And the tight end Olsen right side. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. 
And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. A gain of three, second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Here's McCaffrey, and an alley to run! And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition Let's during go. the season Green, in order to continue to carry the ball Green, at this rate. Stop. Ron Rivera is going to call the timeout. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Some good games going on in the early window. This might be the best of the bunch. his way forward here for a good little game. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, right, but you're also Move counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. That's Samuel, caught left side. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 17 yards on the pick up there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Now they'll run it on the toss. Oh, twisting away. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back, and let's see what they've come up with offensively after Detroit! having time to talk Detroit! it over. He'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. 
And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. McCaffrey. second of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Gone, gone! Gone, gone! Check out. Now a run with McCaffrey. And he is met Quickly in the backfield, down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So they need two yards here on third down. Remember, they're already two of two on third down conversions on this drive. On play action, they'll throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Aaron Lynch in there to get him and that's sack number six for him on the year this has been a tough one for this offensive line it appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game the way they've been pushed around six sacks given up in this one so on fourth down out trots the kicker in a big spot here from the left hash a chip shot here Gano's kick is right through. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Tyrod Taylor now gears up to lead his offense again. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, slow, slow, slow. even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they may be the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. The throw by Taylor here, and that's incomplete. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like that in there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's throwing it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions. And that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. That'll go as a loss of five. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. He'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And unable to break away. They stop him a few yards shy. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Panthers are going to win the football game. So that one hurt. No timeouts left. Look at where the ball is on the field, Charles. I, I don't know if the fat lady's singing yet, but she's starting to hum a little bit, isn't she? You think she's doing scales at this point? <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt about it, but they had to go for it. In this situation, with their timeout situation as well, they had to take the chance, try and get it done. They didn't. Now they're powerless to stop them, essentially. They need a big play somehow from their defense. Set. On the ground, McCaffrey. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Danny Trevathan there to bring him down. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well, because 
We've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And we have that in the NFL. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Panthers are winners here as we say so long from Charlotte.